Hello, and welcome to Tech Unhacked Need, an attempt to bring out pressing industry issues, discuss areas unspoken, and eluding possibilities tempered with pragmatism. Today, we are going to talk about some aspects on cyber resilience, a widely considered vital function for any business, yet the degree of necessity and sufficiency is always debatable. As for IDC Futurescape 2022 predictions, while the worldwide direct digital transformation investments can be seen growing at a 16.5% CAGR in 2022, on the other side, a report by Privacy Australia revealed ransomware attacks are also up by 33%, which means in 2022, a ransomware attack happens in every 12 seconds. A lot of questions come up in terms of assessing the threat facets and in other areas of cybersecurity. Let's go through some of those ambiguous areas today. My guest today is a distinguished cybersecurity professional with a career spanning almost 20 years, an expert in cybersecurity domain. He has been a CISO at some of the reputed organizations leading some of the major transformations in ANZ. And now he's leading the cyber defense wing for Accenture in the NZ market. Let me welcome Sean Thompson to this fireside chat. Sean. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. Excited for the chat, Sean? I am very excited for this chat. Yes, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, as you know, I, I love talking about uh, cyber resilience, all things security. Fantastic. So without further ado, um, I would love to start with my first question, Sean, for you. How do you see the threat landscape evolving? It's a great question, Jay. The, the threat landscape is, is highly dynamic. Um, and what we're seeing is some big global trends. Um, we're seeing ransomware uh, take a, a, over the last 12 months or so as the uh, war in Ukraine uh, and the sanctions against uh, Russia has put pressure on the business models of the threat actors. Thanks, John. But do you see any defined patterns for these ransomware attacks that you're talking about? As you speak to the customers, your peers in the industry, yeah, just in general. There are definitely patterns. Um, and it's, in fact, the patterns that we look for that help us uh, defend effectively and, and, uh, and approach this problem space uh, with cyber resilience in mind. So there's lots, there's, uh, there's key threat actor uh, patterns as they deploy their campaigns. The threat actors are looking to deploy uh, their resources in the most effective ways as well. Um, so they're looking to deploy through campaigns uh, and, and monetize that uh, and, and maximize their return on investment. So there are a few key trends. Some of the interesting ones that we're seeing at the moment are the uh, ability for threat actors to bypass multi-factor authentication. One, one example of that is the bypassing of multi-factor authentication using uh, multi-factor authentication fatigue, uh, flooding their uh, victims with multi-factor authentication requests on their, on their devices, um, and eventually fatiguing them into accepting so that the, the alerts go away. So that 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 is a, a very interesting, uh, a very interesting technique. It's one. It's a technique that has impacted Okta, um, uh, as well as uh, Uber more recently as well. So good that you talked about Uber cyber attack. Now, where do you see um, the real problem occurred with the Uber cyber attack? What's your view on this? The Uber. Uh, attack from what we know so far is is particularly interesting. I think that there's a the attack has the characteristics of someone who is trying to either one make a name for themselves or one cause a great amount of uh, PR disruption, um, uh, brand impact for Uber. Um, that's that's particularly interesting. I think the motivations of the attacker are are, are very important. It helps us understand how they might behave. Um, I'm not particularly surprised, uh, and not because it's Uber. Um, I'm not su not particularly surprised at the behaviours um, uh, and, and the consequences as well. Um, 
in the way in which the attack has occurred. I think a lot of a lot of uh, organisations globally would be able to uh, sympathise uh, in solidarity with uh, with Uber, um, having put in a huge amount of uh, effort. It's often the edge cases uh, that cause these attacks to be successful rather than the majority of the security controls that do exist. And it's one of the reasons why we take a cyber resilient approach. Uh, we like to take a cyber resilient approach when we, when we design um, and, and operate systems because the, the problem space is significant. It's a, it's a really hard thing to maintain a business's innovation and uh, technology transformation uh, and, and maintain security as well. And perhaps a good example of that is the software supply chain where we have increasing levels of, uh, of software dependency uh, hierarchies, uh, software, open source libraries, uh, which, which accelerates our innovation, but also exposes us to increased um, uh, risk through those software supply chain exposures. Um, and and that, the same can be uh, said for uh, business supply chains as well, not just software uh, supply chains. So, so the, the space is incredibly complex and to be able to understand where cyber threat actors are, are coming from, what their motivations are, how they, how they behave, gives us the best opportunity to be able to uh, defend against those and, and recover, respond and recover when, when they do um, attack. I know that you're you're a big advocate of robust application security practices, having having the right kind of cyber resilience framework, especially with the Uber cyber attack. Um, the problem where I see is getting that access through to the PowerShell script, which opened up the um, all the admin credentials. That's um, where where it actually went haywire. Now, do you think with the, what, what's your view of how this could have been protected and what, are, what were the areas that could have been looked after well in advance in a proactive way? It's a really good question, Jay. I think the, it, it's quite common for uh, credentials are part of all of our, uh, all, of, all of our development life. Um, it's, a, it's a fundamental component. Authentication authorization is a fundamental component. Uh, of security uh, that we that we all care about, um, and including developers. Now, the PowerShell component, uh, it appears from what we're, what we're hearing is that the PowerShell contained administrative credentials to the privileged access management uh, system uh, uh, for Uber, uh, and those credentials allowed the attacker to um, access further credentials and, and gain access to more more of the Uber environment. Um, now, best practices uh, are, are relatively well defined here, but not necessarily universally applied. Um, and, and maybe this is the case for Uber. Um, there are a couple of the things that would be quite crucial to implement for these sorts of scripts is to parameterize the, the way in which those credentials are used. And secret, sco secret stores, including the uh, secret stores that that are offered by the system that was that Uber was using, do enable the developers to be able to query those credentials and have um, temporal, temporary access to those without necessarily exposing those credentials um, or, or embedding them into the into the files themselves. Uh, now, so the design and implementation of these crucial uh, scripts is quite um, uh, is has, a, has potentially can have a huge business impact. And I think the interesting thing here is being able to effectively design these controls in a, in a lightweight manner, making sure they're available to developers. Um, there's, a, there's an element of awareness uh, to, be, to be had here, but then also to be able to detect um, how, how developers are potentially misusing those. And very likely it wasn't through a malicious means. It was probably just through um, absence of perhaps a peer review or absence of uh, perhaps a bit of training as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I sympathize.
So how do you see Accenture and Microfocus collaboration enhancing value for our customers? What's your view on that? I think the, one of the great things about the collaboration that Accenture has with Microfocus is the ability for us to bring the best of our strengths together. Microfocus has uh, uh, an amazing array of technology solutions which really enhance uh, and accelerate the delivery uh, of really key business, business problems, solving really key business problems. Um, the, the advantage that, that, uh, that Accenture is, is able to provide uh, to our clients in collaboration with Microfocus is that we have the ability to connect that technology into the business, to be able to develop the capability around those technologies. And in, in areas of mainframe modernization and application security, um, that collaboration is uh, incredibly uh, powerful. Um, combining those diverse strengths together means that we accelerate our, our clients' um, uh, needs, the solutions for our clients. Thank you so much, Sean, for joining me for this fireside chat and sharing your insights. Now, what are the key takeaways that you would um, you would like to briefly talk about for the viewers? Uh, thanks, Jay. Uh, as always, a pleasure uh, talking to you. Uh, and thank you for the invitation uh, for, for today as well. I think the, the, the three key takeaways for me are that security needs to continue to innovate and uh, and be pragmatic. Um, and underpinning that pragmatism, I think a, a, a threat intelligence uh, led cyber resilience approach is incredibly important to being able to drive uh, focused security for, for our, our industry um, and to be able to support and, and combat in many ways that, uh, that complexity. And the last point is that implicit security uh, is something that is attainable uh, when we take that pragmatic, uh, pragmatic cyber resilience-led approach uh, to, to security. Uh, and start small. It's really important not to try and solve everything in one go. Start small, build momentum, start with the, the top, uh, the top uh, most critical uh, assets and, and systems. Start small and work on that approach. That's the way to go, Sean. Thank you so much again.